Hi everyone, this is Bryn. We got home last night after two weeks in Vietnam. We had been planning to stay for another week, but unfortunately, because of coronavirus, the whole world went to shit and we had to come home. Our plane left Ho Chi Minh City yesterday morning at about 1 a.m. And we got into Sydney just after lunchtime, allowing for the time difference. We then had to navigate our way through the airport, catch a taxi back to where we had our car parked. Uh, we were wearing face masks and we then had to drive all the way home back to where we live in Jindabyne in the Snowy Mountains. And we got home at about 7 p.m. last night. The flight that we caught was actually one of the last flights out of Vietnam to Australia. Um, after today, I think that's it. So anyone that's still in Vietnam, I've got no idea how they're going to get home. So we're really glad that we did. It was a shame because we still had seven days of stuff planned. But on the other hand, because of coronavirus, everything was shutting down. So there wasn't really that much that we could do. We're probably lucky if we actually got to do 10% of what we'd actually planned to do in the first place. We flew to Vietnam on the 11th of March. And at that point, we didn't even realize how badly this was going to blow up. At that point, Vietnam only had 16 cases of uh, coronavirus and they were all uh, pretty much largely isolated to one area that we knew we weren't going to. Vietnam seemed to have a pretty good handle on the whole situation. They've taken some pretty extreme measures, which we found out pretty much on the, the first day that we were there. We flew in and got in at about 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning. And as soon as I turned on the Wi-Fi, we got a message saying that the cruise that we had on Heilong Bay had been cancelled, which was a massive disappointment uh, first up. Also, during that sort of 24 to 48 period since we'd left home to go there, uh, other things have shut down. So Sapa was closed, Nimbin was closed. Um, there was talk about other things down in the south that were closing, but they hadn't closed yet. So we thought, okay, well, let's make the most of it. Let's let's do whatever we can. So we spent four days in Hanoi. Uh, Hanoi we really enjoyed, but most of the attractions, uh, museums, uh, things like that were closed. Uh, on a plus side, we got to go to Train Street, which was good. Um, and we got to eat out at lots of restaurants and uh, yummy food and cheap cocktails. So it was, it was good from that perspective. On day five, we flew from Hanoi to Da Nang. And we had plans there to stay at Da Nang, go to Sun World in the Ban Hills and see the Golden Bridge. Uh, we were also going to spend some time staying in... Anne. We were going to go to Anbang Beach and we were supposed to spend at least five or six days doing that. In the end, we only stayed in Da Nang and we stayed close. The day after we got to Da Nang, we found out that our flight home on the 29th had been brought forward to the 27th and we had the choice to accept it or not. Uh, we thought, okay, well, two days, that's fine. We, we accepted it. We confirmed that we were happy to go home on the 27th. The next day, unfortunately, we then found out that Australia was calling for all citizens to return and that we should get back to Australia as soon as possible. So we went to the Vietnam Airlines office and tried to bring our flights forward, but we're told that if we wanted to make that change, since we'd already changed, that it was going to cost us over $1,000. At that point, we didn't really want to spend another $1,000 just for something that we already had. So we thought, oh, look, we'll go away and we'll think about it for a bit. The next day, it started to become even more urgent that we get home. And at that point, Vietnam Airlines contacted us and said, look, they've waived the change fee, but unfortunately, the only seats left were going to be premium economy or business class, which was now going to cost some ridiculous amount of money, three or $4,000 to upgrade to the only seats that they had left. So we just abandoned Vietnam Airlines and we booked with Jetstar. And lucky we, that we did because as I said, it was one of the last flights out of Vietnam back to Australia. So today marks the first day 
of 14 days of compulsory self-isolation for anyone coming back into Australia from overseas. Lucky for us, we live on a farm, so isolating ourselves is not as hard for us as what it would be for some people. We can sit outside here and I have a lovely deck that I can sit on and I've got my barbecue over there and we've got a big table that I can sit at and a lounge over here and our fences are way out over there, the boundary to our property and our nearest neighbours is this house over here, some neighbours over there, this cabin is empty, the house next door is empty, there's a cabin over there in the distance, no one lives in that. So we're pretty much quite a far away from our neighbours and we can also walk around the property quite easily. When we got to the airport we got some information from the Australian government which points out uh, what we have to do as far as the um, isolation is concerned and one of the questions that people were asking us when we had so many messages from people while we were in Vietnam saying you've got to come home you've got to do this and this is what's changed that we, we were getting so bombarded uh, with information but one of the questions was Yes, but what about your daughter? She lives in the house with you. What's she going to do? Is she going to have to go and stay in a hotel or what's going to happen there? So it says here, during the 14 days of isolation, you must stay at home. Don't go out in public. Don't go to work, school, childcare, university or any public gatherings. Only people who usually live with you in the home can be there. You're not allowed to see visitors and avoid contact with all other people. So with our daughter living in the house with us, we pretty much just need to keep our distance. Social isolation within the house. So we stick to our end of the house and she sticks to her end of the house. And, you know, we try to keep that, that distance there. Um, we're going to try to avoid um, using uh, the same utensils and things like that. And we're just going to keep everything disinfected. Not that we think we have coronavirus. We're pretty sure that we don't have coronavirus but here's the thing nobody knows really it can take 14 days uh, after getting the coronavirus before any symptoms appear so that's why the 14 days isolation i certainly don't want to be responsible for passing on coronavirus uh, through negligence anyway um, i think that if we all do the best that we can we've got the best chance of beating this or at least containing it. This morning we slept in pretty late, not so much because of the time difference. Uh, we've got two weeks to adjust back to the four hour time difference there, um, but mainly because we, we left at 1 a.m. in the morning, we flew all night, we didn't really sleep on the plane, then we had to drive home, and we were just absolutely exhausted. Now that we're up, we've already washed our clothes from when we were away, and we've started to think about the jobs that we can do over the next 14 days to keep us busy. I put on the news this morning, and it's all bad news. The stock market is at its lowest levels in decades, and the government is announcing uh, stimulus packages to try and help uh, businesses. Um, the queues at Centrelink, which is our welfare agency, is going out the door and down the street while people wait to try and get help because they're either going to lose their job or they've been forced to close their business. Um, they're estimating over a million people are going to need to go on to uh, Centrelink benefits, which is absolutely crazy. Anyone that can work from home is being asked to do so, and all non-essential businesses have to shut down. The banks are deferring loans and mortgages, and as of today, the borders to the states are being closed to try and stop people moving around. Um, they're trying to ask people to social distance, stay in their homes, which is something that we're all going to have to relearn. This is, we're all very social. Humans by nature are social people and we're in contact a lot. So this is very difficult for people to relearn things that they've been doing their whole lifetime. This is pretty much a once in a lifetime event and 2020 is not going to be forgotten anytime soon. Luckily for us, we have our online business, herogear.com.au, which can continue to operate during this time. 
The downside is that sales are way down. So, you know, we're in trouble just as much as anybody else at the moment. Anyway, I'm going to continue to do this isolation video diary. And everybody, please wash your hands, keep your distance and stay safe. Thanks for watching.